This week I started work on fixing all of the memory leak problems in the game. And it was quite bad. Here's some footage of it running on a MacBook Pro and leaking about 8GB of RAM over 10 minutes. When I moved my MapGen system over to C++, I did remember thinking, oh, I'll clean the memory up at some point later. And that was about a year ago. <laughs> so this week I built a tool to stress test the MapGen system and just got to work cleaning it up. This is a game about exploration and discovery in a large, procedurally generated fantasy world. You discover things, collect items, kill monsters, and finally we're getting to the point where the game is actually quite stable. And it's kind of weird to see that. I don't really expect it to be stable. It's never been like this before. As well as this, I also worked on allowing you to change the floor voxels for places, also complete with support in the editor tool, and I also just fixed a bunch of annoying bugs. When have we ever heard that one before? So for memory leaks, there's no actual moisture involved, only tears. So here's a bit of nice C++ code as an example. Here, I'm just asking the operating system for a thousand bytes of memory to basically just do whatever I want with. But there's a problem. I haven't actually told the operating system that I'm done with it. So it just assumes I still want it. And here I've done what we would call a technical oopsie and leaked some memory. Oh dear. Luckily for your average dunce programmer, tools do exist to help solve problems like this. So for instance, if I tell the operating system that I'm done with the memory, the leak just disappears and all is right with the world. Lots of languages like Java or Python hide this stuff from you, but if you want to be a C++ programmer, you got to do what you got to do. So basically my code was just reserving a lot of memory for each map gen and then not deleting it. Previously that didn't really matter because some other bug would just blow the game up before you even managed to get that far but now it is getting kind of stable, so I do actually have to fix it. I started by writing this stress test tool just to check how bad the problem actually was, and it was pretty bad. This tool just starts up an empty project and generates worlds in a loop, and then ultimately just discards them when it's done. This tool would also be great at some point for sanity testing world gen outputs, but right now it's just checking that no memory leaks and just nothing crashes. So with that, I could then just run it with the memory inspector tool. Originally, I wanted to use a tool called Valgrind for Linux, because that would mean I could run it in the cloud as part of my CICD pipeline. However, kind of annoyingly, I did have problems with it, so I ultimately just ended up using the Apple debugger instead. The reason was that the operating system, I think, was killing the process because it was using too much memory, which is ironic for a memory testing tool. Um, but it might run differently in the cloud or something like that. Basically, I ran out of time to be able to properly diagnose it. So we'll get back to that later, because it would be good to have Valgrind running in the cloud. Most of the leaks were just where I expected them to be, but some of them were a bit more hidden. I also had to re-architect some of the MapGen system to include a proper shutdown procedure and also pass some of this logic off to the MapGen clients so they could destruct their own bits as well. It was basically just like a lot of this sort of thing. And before you ask, yes, I am aware that shared pointers exist. I just wanted to do it the trad way today, okay? How's that? The memory debugger was one of the most useful bits for sorting this out, and I got it to a point now where I can just run the stress test and nothing gets leaked. The other main thing I was working on this week was just improving the places in the overworld. So I've now got support in my scene editor for editing voxels specifically for the ground. These just get written to the map gen verbatim, and finally enable me to draw things like paths in my villages. I've experimented with the graveyard scene a bit here, and it does look kind of cool, but I do think the color palette needs a bit more attention. But regardless, it's a great addition to have, and it'll be really useful when I've got some even bigger places. Other than that this week, I fixed some stuff. EXP orbs are back. They did regress a long time ago and I just kind of forgot about them. Oops. <laughs> Turns out that they were still in the game. It's just that their mesh object was being created with my script side voxelizer, which I thought I'd got rid of. So basically all the vertices unpacking stuff I put into the shaders wasn't being run for them. So they just kind of like glitched out of existence and you couldn't even see them. But this means the EXP orbs are back now and looking more beautiful than ever. I fixed this shadow issue I was seeing on 4K monitors. This was ultimately just a shadow map resolution thing with the higher resolution making it basically just more obvious. But I fixed it by disabling the vertex animations for trees only when rendering the shadow caster. And this ultimately just meant that the weird shadow position error thing just wouldn't occur. Kind of the problem now is that the shadows are fully stationary while the trees are actually doing their little animation. But personally, I think it looks better than what it was before, where it just looked totally broken. I reduced the total size of the bundle by cleaning out some unneeded files, but even though I reduced 13 megs down to about one, it didn't actually change the size of the zip very much, which is quite sad but it's still worth doing. And I also refactored quite a bit of code to be able to write the vertex colors to the trade in the first place. So we're getting there. So next week, I think the plan is that I'm just gonna focus on just content and gameplay. It's kind of been a long time in the making, but I do feel like I've kind of got all the pieces ready to go to be able to actually make some stuff for the game. So that's really exciting. And if you're as excited as I am, then leave a comment down below about it and leave a comment about anything. 
I mean, tell me what your favorite kind of breakfast cereal is. I don't mind, but leave a comment down below because it does help the algorithm uh, and helps the project in turn. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye.